Hey, good morning and welcome to another edition of the Patriot Radio News Hour. Yes, we've gone from TGIF to OFIM. You'll have to figure out what those initials stand for. This show is brought to you by, and you're listening to the Patriot Trading Group. 1-800-951-0592 is our business line here. You can also head out 24-7-365 to the wee hours of the morning at allamericangold.com. Updated daily with news to comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. I'm Eric Cedarstrom. Hamburger Helper now is on my business card, official title for Joe Jaquint, who is the president and CEO. You guys, I want to thank you and also just complain. You guys broke Patriot Friday. We had so many orders that we had to come in here. I mean, I don't think Arlene got home till midnight. Joe and Sarah were back in here, worked all day Saturday. Thank you. You're paying attention. Gold up $42. Just a little bit. It's a little pop this morning, but everything's going up. What did I say? I mean, everybody's talking about the great economic pandemic, you know, and, oh, we're all gonna, what's going to happen is they've learned from 08, and I'm telling you what we're looking at. We're staring down the barrel of just incredible inflation in this country. The gold market knows it, and what you're starting to see now is when stocks really fell, they hammered gold because, oh, they had to sell their gold. Yes, they were all standing in line to get rid of their U.S. $20 gold pieces that because they had to meet their margin calls. Well, now stocks drop, gold goes up. Stocks go up, gold goes up. So you're just going to see this little this ascension that will continue to run eventually the trillions of dollars. And I'll, let me reiterate that as I did last week. Trillions of dollars will be in society, and uh, ultimately it'll work its way through certain areas of the supply chain, and that's going to create shortages and runaway inflation. Liquor prices through the roof. Price of all that. Go out and start shopping. You want a bottle of Jack Daniels in some areas, it's tripled. Pennsylvania, the morons over there, shut their liquor stores. So now everybody's driving out of the state to go get their booze. I don't know. These people that are in charge are just absolute morons. They've never ran a business. I mean, all you people, you conservatives, you guys that are my age that listen, and, and you know, my, I have my audience demographic, 90% of us men had paper routes. This is how far back we went where we realized that doing business is not easy. But, you know, the rest of these people got liberal arts degrees, and they become, and they just get, the minute they graduate, the number one most coveted job since Bill Clinton was president is being a government employee, whether you're a teacher, a fireman, a cop, a cleric, a, uh, you know, an inspector. I mean, just pick it. These are the number one jobs. These are the only pensions left in America. Now I ask you, whew, on this Monday morning, was it worth it? Because every penny we saved by offshoring, Every penny, every factory that was gone, and everything that 3M, and I listened to that 3M CEO on Maria Bartiroma lie through his teeth. Horrible interview on Saturday. Minnesota mining and manufacturing. Minnesota, most, one of the most liberal states in the country. They never talk about them, but they are. We gave it all away. Why? So people, we wouldn't have to pay wages? So you wouldn't have to put people through college so we could go into this global economy? And now, literally, they run Bartertown. The commies run Bartertown. If they shut us off, granted, the, shores of, the stores of Walmart and the shelves will empty, but so were their food. Because they won't let, this president won't let the food out of this country. He's already mad enough about the masks and the ventilators. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton did it. George Bush W. He helped open up the borders, create these low wages, and offshored everything. Was it worth it? Because every penny that we saved, every penny is going to cost us ten times as much in government stimulus. Ten times as much. Are the factories coming back? Are they going to be able to put it back? You want to know something? And when we get through all of this, Wall Street's still going to fight it. They don't want to pay fifteen dollars an hour to people to build masks. They'd rather let them do it with slave wages in China and ship it in here. And it doesn't matter everything from razors to clothing to tennis shoes to furniture to everything. Is it worth it? Because if this continues, and I mean ultimately, if this comes to the worst case scenario, there isn't going to be anything. How long will it take to put the genie back in the bottle? Sorry, Joe. Just kind of on a rant this That's morning. That's all right. So. You go with it. Hamburger helper getting the work done. You know, it's funny. You, early on, you talked about paper routes. I said, hey, when I was a, everybody had a paper route. The paper routes are now being done by guys that are still your age. I know. <laughs> they still got them. <laughs> Granddad was a newsboy until he was 84. 
That's a Randy Newman sign. But you know what's interesting? The quality of the paper. If I leave a paper, because I still get one, if I leave a paper in my driveway, by 5 o'clock it turns yellow. When I was a kid, I mean, for me to stop delivering papers because you know, they all, they're all laying there, turned yellow, it took a month in the Arizona sun. I mean, a month now. Eight hours. That's how cheap the quality of the paper is, like everything else from China. But I do like the fact that uh, that people have said this virus is the, has lasted longer than anything imported from China. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> just a couple of quick updates. Uh, we're we're pretty much all caught up here at Patriot Trading Group. Uh, all the products, you know, if we're running it on the air, that means we can get it, and it's going to get out there to you. The metals plans has already started shipping. They're, we're going to be shipping metals plans all week. Uh, our plan is to try to be done by the end of the week. It may roll into Monday or Tuesday of next week, uh, but by and large, we're on top of everything. I uh, want to point out again, I uh, I know it's hard. It is what it is. If you go out to our website, if you go out to Kitco, they're showing a price of, I think, gold's like sixteen fifty. You got to add forty dollars to that. Uh, the the uh, the reason being is there are no physical metals being delivered, and what's happening is they're being offered warrants, Eric. They're being offered paper warrants. Saying, right, hey, hey, lieu of delivery. We don't have the metal, have this warrant. Nobody wants the warrants, and that's why there's this big disparity. The only gold markets trading are futures markets because they think they're going to have the gold in the future. You can have it now. Call one 800 592 and get some. We'll be back. Bye now. Radio News Hour, Eric Cedars from Joe Chapman sitting in front of me, Wendy out front. Head out to allamericangold.com too. So locally, uh, if you've got weeds growing in your yard and uh, things are just running amok, the it is amazing. It looks like the Mekong Delta up in the North Valley. Call my son-in-law, Cody Pinkerton. I'll give you a phone number here. Uh, anywhere in the North Valley, he'll uh, come take care of all that for you. Pinkerton Landscaping. At 480-440, no, I'm sorry, 480-201-2011. 480-201-2011, or you can go on his Facebook site, Pinkerton Landscaping. Uh, and your real estate, real estate here in Phoenix set a record, <laughs> believe it or not. The price for closings last week, but again, all this was put in the pipeline, you know, 45 days ago, and people are closing, Um there's uh, bidding wars going on in the most active price range. The uh, listings are up 20%, but again, they're, the official story in the newspaper over the weekend, Kathleen Rieger, you know, I mean, they always do damage control, but they're calling it like a kinked hose. So with all the money and all the stimulus and everything shut down, when they unkink the hose, it's all supposed to come pouring in here. And, uh, I mean, if they get it out to the streets, if they don't mess it up, so... Uh, real estate, call Ryan Buckley at the Cedarstrom Group, 480-440-4541. friend of mine, uh, Holmstrom, Chris Holmstrom, is one of the owners of CNR Tire here. They I uh, talked to him Saturday. They're keeping their employees on. Um, business very slow, but they're keeping them on. And then they've also, um, you know, going, I'm sure, applying for the SBA payroll assistance, which I, I know of about three people. How many people do you know that have applied for any SBA as payroll Me. assistance, you, yeah. So, and then there was the grants. So far, none of it has hit the streets. No, no. I don't know no, anyone no, no. who's got one. If you have got one, will you email us at contact at 1360? Just because, you know, we, we're trying to keep people abreast. We want to know if it's working and if it's getting out there. Because if they don't get it out, this is going to make the Great Depression look like child's play. And 08 look like merely a, 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 the 10-year real estate and equity pandemic look like child's play. If they don't get this money out, it's been approved. They need to get it out because they know. A lot of these guys know. We don't want to repeat. We, it's terrible when Federal Reserve notes gain purchasing power. I mean, you guys didn't like it, let's face it. So when you could buy more money, with buy your home for pennies on the dollar. It has to go the other way. We have to have runaway inflation here. It's the only way we're going to grow out of this. And, you know, obviously, if a Big Mac is $14 and a gallon of gas is 10 bucks, 
And uh, the national debt is, what, 30, 40, 50 trillion? You know, we can maybe inflate our way out of it for a while until ultimately people just refuse to accept it. So support your local businesses. Do what you can. And uh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. so this is just sad, though. Larry Kudlow, you can't believe anything that guy says to begin with. But uh, this morning he was trying to say there's been $38 billion worth of loans committed uh, for this SBA program, I assure you, everybody that has a small business is trying to fill. First of all, your bank has to have it. So my bank didn't have it. Uh, finally, uh, U.S. Bank didn't have it. Finally, got an email this weekend. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, it was a uh, Sunday. It came in, so I, I filled it out. Uh, my guess is by the end of business today. The three hundred fifty billion dollars will have already been submitted, and well, probably well above that. Right. Uh, none of it's come out yet, though, as you've said, none. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So, so I don't know. So let us know. Contact at thirteen sixty khnc dot com. Khnc. So, ah, oh, somebody said over the weekend that uh, you know the Holy Week here that maybe this all started right after the Super Bowl halftime show <laughs> could be God's answer. I have to tell you though that one of the, the one of the symptoms that seems to run true for this virus is you can't smell anything for a while. So I think I've got the test. So I've got a rescue basset hound dachshund. We named him his name's after John Wayne, the Duke. The Duke has the worst smelling breath in the world. If you're if you're not sure, if you don't if you have it, come on over to my house and give Dukey a sniff. <laughs> because if you can't smell that, you should, probably should get to the hospital immediately. So how about Prager, Dennis Prager, talk show host over the weekend? Did you see where he was talking about the, uh, you know, the liberal governors have said, and they have said that we will, to save one life, we will shut down everything if we can save one life. And Prager just asked the question, and, you know, of course, the liberals hate this, but, you know, really, if... If somebody asked you, Joe, so you're, you, if we give you the virus, 10 million people can go back to work today in, in New York. Would you take one for the team? Yes. Yeah, I think most people would, wouldn't they? So so I don't know. You can tell the president wants to open the country. They're going to get through Easter. People, tremendous, tremendous psychological blow. People were hunkered down, willing to to accept that here, and you've seen it for the most part. What's amazing is talking to, getting my morning medical update from Oregon State University Hospital in Portland, where my daughter is a registered nurse. They have 40 cases. Uh, 20 are in the hospital, 20 are outpatients, so half and half. Again, not alarming, you know, earth-shattering numbers at this is a huge hospital, too. I don't know how many floors it is. 20 floors, 25 floors. And uh, right, you know, tall, huge building. And uh, so who knows? Who knows what the numbers are? If you read John Hopkins' numbers, if you go to Drudge Report, you see that map, the world map with all the red dots on it. That's Johnny Hopkins. I went to school with Johnny Hopkins. <laughs> I know. We smoked pot with Johnny Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry about that. That's Joe Jake one, by the way. Um if you look at that, in America, when you look at those numbers, and you can go to your town and you can move the cursor around, that so far I haven't seen anybody recovered. Now, my wife's cousin had it, and my, my cousin, one of my cousins in the Midwest, one medical field and one in uh, uh, American Airlines International stewardess, believe they had it, uh, but they've recovered. They're out and about now. So wouldn't that go? Shouldn't there be some recovery numbers? Well, I I have I use a different site than Johnny Hopkins because I was smoking dope with them in high school, so I don't <laughs> trust them. The Worldometer has a World, wait Worldometer Worldometer for the United States. Uh, by the way, New York just reported uh, 600 more dead in New York City. So the weekend slowdown, uh, I guess, has gone away because they're going to give another number this afternoon. So the death toll in New York uh, will probably be a new record high today. But they're saying in the U.S., 349,885 cases, 10,327 dead, 19,219 recovered. So they have recovered. 
All right. So that's a pretty go, low number, though. That's pretty I mean, low, yeah. But at least they have some. They, they, and that, they, is that in America? Or? That is just in the U.S., yes. All just right, so, in the U.S. So the Johnny Hopkins number on Drudge Report, that map is uh, – which ones do you think the uh, New York's looking at? John Hopkins is the one who shut down the universities. They're the ones who shut down all the college sports. I mean, they, they're the ones who did it with their numbers. And that was their recommendation. What are your university – your Yale University, John Hopkins call saying, yeah, you know, if you don't shut everything down, half your student body is going to be well, dead. Well, they, they just put you in, a, in an unwinnable position. Right. Because if you didn't shut it down and somebody dies, we're all going to tell everybody it was your fault. You know what they're doing in California, and, that, and I think they're doing this elsewhere, but California, because the hotels are done. And, you know, God forbid that anyone, the homeless and the bums, that are out on the street have far more rights than your business or anything that you have. I mean, oh, God, and especially if you're an illegal homeless. If you're an illegal homeless, you're set. You're solid gold. I mean, you're platinum. (laughs) You're platinum. Let's face it. So now they're putting them in these hotels. So the people in Laguna Hills are complaining because you've got, what is that, Laguna, one of the largest retirement communities in California. It's their sun city. And it's up behind Laguna there, and they have some luxury hotel. And I was listening to a call-in show over the weekend where a guy said, well, these people have been hosting Democratic fundraisers at this hotel, extremely liberal Californians, and now, now they're putting the homeless, because they have no patrons. They've got no other. They're putting the homeless into luxury hotel rooms in Laguna at $475 a night. Build to the California taxpayer. I mean, you're better off to go in there and just take one for the team if you're going to go out. Only in California. Only in California. Yeah, you couldn't have find, like, the Motel 6. Right. No, you know what I'm saying? Well, they, this is how you get connected. So what? they have no business. Plus, the government pays triple what anyone else would. And you know the guy that owns the Laguna Beach that's collecting 500 bucks a pop's a good friend with the governor. That's right, governor. Bring Absolutely. him in here. Absolutely. Yeah, he's held all their political fundraisers and rallies. So this is the crony capitalism that exists. So the people at the retirement communities, nobody tests these people. They're able to come and go, run amok, have room service, go take up the town. I mean, it's just amazing. It's amazing that they're in luxury accommodations next to one of the largest retirement villages in Southern California. May kill them all. This is how crazy this is getting. So... And we can't call this the COVID, which I think the name COVID is going to become very popular in this country for the baby boom that will come out of it. COVID, you know, it's got cachet. It's, it's got like cachet. it's like seven, you know, from, <laughs> from Seinfeld. So COVID, not David, you know, not Cody, but COVID. So, eh, you know. But former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon yesterday said he wants Deborah Burks the Valley Girl, you know, you listen to her. If you ever, if you just listen to her, one thing to look at her, nothing just to listen to her on the radio. A lot of Valley Girl, uh, the White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, to show us the metrics that she's been using as a guidance to the federal response of the coronavirus outbreak. In an interview on Fox yesterday, Bannon said Burks referred to the University of Washington Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation Data as fueling the White House decision to extend the social distancing measures until the end of April. We're going to all have, Trump said he's planting the seed. If you can't read between the lines, I'll do it for you. We're going to open the economy. You're going to have to take a risk. If you go in, if you want to get out and get it running, you're going to have to take a risk. Everyone's going to well, have to have masks. You know what, though, and, they're, and so. they're starting to talk about uh, maybe you get a special ID if you have been recovered from corona and they believe hey if you got it once you can't get it again type of a scenario uh show us your papers and all of those things uh, just all this crazy stuff they think about it. and i know the president wants to reopen the country but the media is going to be it's going to be you know you sit there they're, they're happy that europe seems to be on the other side of it now potentially europe and uh, italy and spain they're still closed. Those economies are still closed. They're not reopening. It's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks before they reopen, which means I don't see this country reopening again until June. Well, and even if you do, the supply signs are broken. I mean, look at, uh, uh, well, you know, I own part of that brewery, Front Porch Brewery, and everybody wants to support them, and the Bolstroms are great people, and 
they've got a great product and so you've got all these people buying it to go and they have a little canning set up and from what i understand now can't get the can can't get the cans yeah. so this is what's happened now when you throw money at it when everybody has money this is where the inflation comes in so you just got to start out bidding and that's what's happening you know that's what the governors are complaining about right they with have 3m to, the whole 3M, situation right. with 3m so here they i forget arkansas said yeah we had them bought and then, of course, 3M goes, not our fault. It's our distributors. Right. And then they, they, yeah, they, they say, well, all we do, we sell it to the distributors. Who they sell it to is their business. Right. They just, so they haven't bought, and the distributor says, well, we got a higher bid. What do you want to do? Yeah. So And yeah, that guy showed up at our door with cash. Yep. So same thing's happening in gold. But talking about Steve Bannon, the, uh, you know, not the most light guy, former White House chief strategist. He wants to rename the disease, though. He wants to call it the CCP. CCP. Yeah, because it came out of Wuhan and bore the brunt, and they bore the brunt of this, the Chinese Communist Party, okay, that we now knew about this from the, at least late December and in all probability from early December, he said, and then they covered it up. Isn't that what the the Russian hockey team had on their jersey? CCP, CCP yeah. Right? Yeah. May, may have been three Cs, I so, think. I can't remember. The COVID, Chinese-originated virus number 19, still wreaking havoc and running amok. But here you're listening to the voice of reason in a world gone mad. Patriot Radio News, our return after these messages. Stay with us. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Mrs. Schlafly was a courageous and articulate voice for traditional values and common sense for more than 70 years. Now, continuing that legacy... The president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Thanks to globalism, the Wuhan coronavirus easily swept across the world like wildfire. Exposure quickly jumped from open border to open border, afflicting nations around the world and many in the United States. Yet it all started from one poor district in China. Make no mistake that globalism is what makes the unclean eating practices of distant China a threat to the health and safety of all Americans. This is not the first time an outbreak of a disease far away has caused panic and death within our nation. Don't forget the Ebola virus that came from Africa in October of 2014. This Wuhan coronavirus is an especially nasty virus as far as contagions go. Unlike others that spread only through bodily fluids, it spreads through the respiratory system. Obviously, it's a lot harder to contain a virus if it's spread by the very act of breathing. However, breathing could only take the coronavirus so far. It took the unrestricted migration policies touted by the globalists to get the virus across the Pacific. This Wuhan coronavirus tragedy has very ironic timing. It came just as a new trade deal with China was negotiated by President Trump. While that certainly means a lot for American industry, it means a lot for American health and safety, too. Trump recognizes that we have to control our interactions with China if we're going to control the diseases. If we embrace the globalist lie that the world cannot stop the trend toward a one-world government with no borders and no trade restrictions, there's nothing stopping viruses like the Wuhan coronavirus. We simply cannot afford to mess around with deadly pathogens like this. Democrats may try to politicize this tragedy as though Trump himself ordered the open-air Chinese meat market to sell meat from cats and bats and snakes, but that's ludicrous. We can't force China to rise to American standards of health and safety, but we can take common-sense steps to ensure that those diseases don't make it to our shores. If you want someone who will keep you safe, rather than turning a deadly disease into a political tool, look to President Trump. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Illegal immigration burdens our schools and social services and opens doors to criminals and terrorists. Outdated visa programs divert jobs from Americans. PhyllisSchlafly.com chronicles these outrageous unfair practices and provides answers. Go online to PhyllisSchlafly.com. Thanks for listening and join us next time for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. How you doing out there? It's Monday on this 6th day of April 2020, the year of our Lord. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I know you're, uh, well, we've got a captive audience, literally and figuratively, so we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. I don't know. 
I know you're seeing a lot of the news and everybody's watching it and really um, you know it's hard for us to edify you on anything that uh, unless it just breaks instantly we have a news wire which uh, not everybody has it's about oh 15 20 minutes ahead of the internet <laughs> it it takes the people to you know take in the info figure out how to slant the story and get it out to you but our newswire here has been invaluable throughout the years but it says now millions of americans could wait months for stimulus checks from the federal governor or government according to the house democrat memo contained by abc news with millions of americans unemployed in the midst of blah 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 and last thursday secretary steve mnuchin said the IRS service would begin direct coronavirus payments to taxpayers. Now, that was when they put the picture of the check on the front of the uh, the IRS.gov and showed you how to figure out what was your routing number and what was your accounting number. And uh, it lasted for a half a day. So I haven't looked at it since. I don't know. So I don't know how they're going to get it out. But um, I would say that, uh, you know, by the stores, have you seen the traffic in the stores now dropping? Because uh, Credit cards are getting maxed out, and people are running out of money. So once they get the money, they have to get it out. And, you know, it's crazy. And they can't just do the crony capitalism, you know, okay, here's your SBA loan for your liberal hotel in California. The bums can come stay in here for 400 bucks a night and eventually get room service and steal all the towels. But, uh, I mean, something's got to give here. Here's another thing, you know. Think about <laughs> this is crazy. Think about the president trying to put up a wall around the southern border and the mass influx and the decimation of American wages here. The U.S. State Department now is no longer issuing passports because of the coronavirus outbreak. So unless it's a qualified life or death emergency, according to Time magazine, although the department already issues an advisory telling Americans not to do any travel internationally, the State Department's taking additional steps to limit overseas travel. So now they're not going to let you out. Thank God that wall's there. <laughs> <laughs> they it was it, always meant to keep us in. We're not getting out. You know, have you known many expatriates in your life that really just, they, you have to give up your Social Security number? Do you know that? You have to give it up. You, I don't want it anymore. I'm leaving. And plus, uh, you got to get the old... Uh, you know, enemaectomy, if you will, before you depart to make sure you've gotten all squared up with the government. Right. You can't transfer. You have to pay the top tip-top capital gains on everything, an income tax bracket, on everything you own to leave. So when you give up your, your citizenship and your Social Security number, I've known one guy who's done it. One. I mean, we had a lot of expats go down to Costa Rica and come back. We have listeners in Panama. Panama's been Nobody stable. ever leaves Panama. Pretty stable there, it seems like. Panama means beautiful fish, the translation. So, you ever seen Panama? I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of these places are going to look even a lot more attractive when this inflation really starts kicking in here. Because is this going to be too expensive to live? I don't know what's going to happen to all the people retiring and how they... How they're going to make it on a $1,400 a month Social Security check. That's not going to get it done. Oh, no, ain't going to work. So so anyway, how about this one? The insurer Allstate said today it'll return more than $600 million in auto insurance, insurance premiums to customers as many Americans stay home and drive less during the shelter-in-place orders to curb the coronavirus. Most customers will receive a payback of 15% of their monthly premium in April and May. The payback, which will apply to 18 million policies issued by Allstate and eSurance and Encompass units, follow the data analysts by insurer that showed mileage is down between 35 and 50% in wow. most states. Wow. So think about it. If, they're, if you're telling you mileage is down 35 to 50%, the airlines have told us airline traffic's down 90 to 95%. How bad is this situation with oil, really? Yeah, it's pretty rough, isn't it? How so. bad is it, really? Well, oil had its best week ever last it week. It did, <laughs> and it, it's down today on news that maybe the, the they're going to have a virtual meeting. They're all going to be on Zoom or something. Uh, hasn't quite materialized yet. I, you know, 10 million barrels, uh, which, of course, is not possible between just Russia and Saudi Arabia. We need a lot more than that. 
Well, you got the Dow up 1,200 at 22,261, S&P at 2,600, up 141. Now, remember in 08 when the S&P and gold traded places. It's going to happen again here, so get ready. It's going to trade places. NASDAQ, 7,784 bucks up 410. Gold up to $1,690.10, up $44.60 to the ounce. Silver up, what, uh, half a buck? 50 yeah, almost 60 cents now, 60 yeah. Cents. So, yeah, so uh, silver, uh, fifteen ten right now. So silver back above $15. Prices are just going off the charts everywhere we look. Every time we, t- we call our suppliers and we call out, all over the country. What do you have? How much is it? It's It's been amazing to watch these premiums. Premiums, yes. Try finding anything, any gold at, you know, it's $200 over. It's what it is. So if it's if it's legal tender status and it fits U.S. Constitution, and that's just for the bare, bare bottom. Bare material. bottom, which is, and there's none. Uh, that's the problem. Right. You, know, we, you know, well, if I had some, it'd be this or that. I mean, it's incredible. Oil down $1.46 at $26.88 to the ounce. I think everything will retest its lows. I think ultimately when the money gets out there and thinks this just turns into the Weimar Republic where the guy, if the guy in front of you ain't willing to pay, the guy behind you is. And that's what happens. It's what happens. Everybody's got money. They need to do it. It's the only way out. It's the only way out of this. You can't just shut down entire world. They can't get people to go back to work. They're going to milk most people, and we even know some. They're not going to work. I've gotten multiple reports. They just don't, they, 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 you know, the... Not necessarily people that I know, but people I know whose employees are telling them. Right, they're not coming back. I'm so. making more money with the government stimulus than I did working for you. I will milk this till the end. Well, the headline, J.P. Morgan today says investors should prepare for a vicious spiral more than twice as bad as any financial crisis we've seen. We've already seen the virus hit the financial markets. Just get ready for tremendous, tremendous volatility, and it's going to be that way until every until the money really hits the streets. And then they try to refill the, the stockpiles, and everybody has money. And who knows where it'll be. I don't think it's going to be in toilet paper as much as it's going to be in in basic staples, you know, canned food and and, and meat and the price. And, and eventually the oil markets are going to recover. Trust me on this. They'll figure well, they're it gonna out. they're going to fix it, right? I mean, we know this. Trump, Trump, one way or the other, they're going to fix it. They had, they have no intentions of allow, allowing us to pay a dollar a gallon for gasoline. No intention. No, no. Not, not when they know that everybody's got their credit lines recharged. So we can only hope. Radio News Hour continues on this Monday. Stay with us if you can take it. We'll be back. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. How anybody could pay any attention to that guy? Don't forget, he went bankrupt with everybody else in 08. Why? Because he didn't have any gold. You know what's interesting? You know, we had always recommended that you take 30% of your portfolio and put it into hard assets. And now, you know, people are still mad at me. They, and we have so many people that have no stocks, they have the, you know, where they live, and they, they, they put everything else into hard assets, and it's really, really paying off for them. So not that, you know, I recommend nobody knows the future, and, uh, you know, you, you have to find what a balance is comfortable for you. I got, I got to tell you, you know, we, we've been working through these beautiful, beautiful late 1800s, early 1900s, just stunning product, you know, the, the old U.S. Morgan dollars, the silver dollars. And I saw a guy on TV, you know, the TV coin hucksters, and uh, and I'm like, wow, you know, he had a roll of them, the beautiful coin spinning in 1888s, and da, 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 da. the same, the exact same product that we're selling. And I saw that it was for eight hundred and ninety dollars, and I'm like, he had it flashing on the screen for a roll of them, and I'm like, wow. I thought, you know, how, where's this guy getting these? And then I saw the fine print; it said three payments. <laughs> <laughs> Three payments of eight hundred and ninety dollars. So, by the way, the one dollar and change, one dollar and change movement in silver uh, for bars and all bullion and jewelry and scrap and melt has now translated into a five dollar move in the silver dollars. And we could easily get, we could get three payments of eight hundred and ninety dollars for these 
because they're just vanished. And we were lucky to buy these two weeks ago, and we were lucky to have them because, and just through a, a series of events that it ended up. But this is what happens when you've been in business so long. Um, so now they're eight hundred dollars. We were at what seven on a we're roll. So seven. yeah, they're up five bucks a piece, which you haven't seen anything yet. So, so we still have some rolls left. So. If you want to put them with a uh, U.S. $20 Liberty, so you get U.S. product, um, a nice Liberty Series $20 legal lawful tender, 1866 to 1907, and then halfway through 07, Teddy Rosendale, not FDR, but Teddy, thought our coinage was ugly, and he commissioned Augustus St. Gaudens, and they redesigned them, which is the style, the walking lady Liberty that, uh, that Reagan took and redid the Bullion Eagles with, and, and they're just, you know, Either one. I like the bust of the Lady Liberty's head. I like the first series, so it's the classic. It's the classic one. But they're right on them. U.S. twenty dollar gold, you know, and you have to hold this material and ultimately have to, in a in a completely hyperinflated society, have to work your way out. And I mean, the last thing you're going to want is cash for these, because you know the hardest thing that is going to be to do is to figure out how much it ca- cash it takes the next day. So. This is why you want to hold things that are real and valuable that keep pace with a socioeconomic, uh, hyperinflated, destructed economy. So a U.S. $20 lib and a roll of the Liberty and a roll of the beautiful Morgan dollars, the uh, mixed dates through the late 1800s, early 1900s, if they're in there, uh, 2900 Or you can cut that in half at 1900 but these are in limited supply. So, you know, um, one yeah, guy could... Right now, I think 10 orders would exonerate yeah, well, the supply. I don't know how many rolls we have. We don't left. have that many rolls, those BU Morgan rolls uh, at, at $800 today. My favorite coins, too, by far. They're so fantastic. When you got Just really nice quality, ones. old silver, old collectible material, and you realize, you know, and what's interesting is the history of them. You don't know how they moved. And we and I have told the story. We don't know that, you know, the old silver dollars could have gone by wagon train you know, from the 1800s somewhere, you know, to Carson City or to the Denver men or whatever. And I had a guy call going, I want the Wells Fargo bag. Now, I never said they were in the Wells Fargo bag. They're in treasury bags. But, you know, it's uh, who knows? I mean, but when you hold them, you're holding history. I may your- have a bag back there with Wells Fargo on it. It's not an original. but You know, there's a spot out in the desert where my father-in-law and his brother, my uncle, believe the the famous Wells Fargo treasury treasury is treasure is hidden there was a big strong box that got robbed between Yuma and Phoenix and out around uh, Quartzsite and there's a lot of people that look for it on the California line and around Blythe and my father-in-law and his brother were convinced they found it because you can see where this uh, rock escarpment that stuck out looked like it was blown up you know the end of a rock and then, bam, dropped straight down. And, I mean, the rock's the size of a three-bedroom house, and they think that that's where the – because they had dynamite, too, that they blew up <laughs> and dropped it on. So, anyway, if anyone ever gets it. Hey, who knows? These bag. coins could have came out of that vault from that guy in Vegas, Binion's vault. Binion's, yeah. Remember, he had zillions of them. So. Or Jerry Buss. Remember him, the owner oh, of the, yeah, Lakers? the Lakers? He loves silver dollars. My favorite was the story where, you know, like the old Carson City silver dollars and some of them – some of the rare dates, and he's, he's starting in the 80s, worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And I don't know, I probably told this on the air, but a guy in California traded a silver dollar for a house and recorded the sale at one buck. So anyway, if you're tired of going to the break, Allstate's going to give you back some of your uh, premiums for not driving. But, of course, you know, you know as well as I do that uh, that's coming from the stimulus, you know. Wall Street's no, or all states, not going to be any good Samaritan. You know, they're worried everybody's going to stop making their payments right. altogether. <laughs> so, you know what's weird too? The Chinese tourist sites are now packed again. You know, they let them out. So, so they're having a problem with that. The popular Chinese tourist sites were packed with people over the weekend. And even though the whole health officials are warning that the risk of the spread is not over, so they. See, nobody likes to be told what to do. We have the same problem there that we have here. I don't know. Did you give your life to save millions of jobs? I know some people's lives I'd give. I mean, I guess when they ask you if it's not mine, I guess it's okay. So, oh, Patriot Radio News Hour. Let's see who breaks it next. So, <laughs> be back after these messages. Stay with us. 
Final segment on a Monday. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, like shout out to Greg in Windsor. Ordered Friday. You know we were all stressed out, and he I don't know, he took a shot at me, and I said, you know, hey, I didn't come here to get insulted, and he goes, yeah, where do you usually go? <laughs> I love our customers. Feel free. Listen, for you kids at home, I know my grandchildren, Emma uh, Pinkerton and Ava Pinkerton, are listening. Um, I got some good news for you. The New Zealand Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, has a good message for all the children in the world that amid the coronavirus outbreak, saying Monday that the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny are now classified as essential workers. That's good to know. So good to know. don't you guys worry about that. So... Things uh, will move on here, and uh, we'll uh, get through this together. China was accused over the weekend of hoarding that they had more than they needed, and they should, of all the PPE, personal protection equipment, which we figured out what that was Monday, right? That PPE thing, I'm like, you know. So anyway, uh, China promised it would not restrict exports of any more medical supplies hour after the New York Post reported that the Trump administration is weighing legal action against Beijing for such actions. We'll not forget that at the beginning of the fight against the epidemic, many countries gave us a helping hand. Jiang Fan from the Department of Foreign Trade at the Ministry of Commerce said in a press conference. Therefore, when the situation in China is getting better and overseas epidemic conditions are accelerating, we are willing to make relevant efforts based on epidemic prevention and control to provide support and assistance. And all of those products, well, not all, but most of them, have American names on them. So I'm going to finish the show with what I started and how I started. Was it worth it? What, to save wages, not pay people wages, not put people through college, you know, I know, to get rid of all the tremendous government oversight, OSHA, and, uh, you know, every little, any type of uh, government agency that regulates everything and choked off free enterprise and business in this country. Was it worth it? We're finding out. We're going to find out, too, if the store is just completely, completely empty and what it's going to take to get the genie back in the bottle and get American factories running again. But I guarantee you the liberals will all be lined up in the uh, Environmental Protection Agency and, oh, you know, we can't cut down trees. We can't do that. What's wrong with you? We can't have steel mills. We can't have factories. Notice one thing, though. They're saying the drought in Arizona may be over. So the slowdown in China and shutting off the factories has created this great snowpack and returned the the normal weather patterns back to the southwest. So anyway, Joe, where are we at? Where are we at on this Monday? Yeah, quick look here at the market. Uh, gold's up forty five dollars sixteen ninety one. Silver is up sixty cents right now at fifteen oh seven. Wall Street's up. 1,100 points. Uh, the good news is uh, the slowdown in cases in Italy. Uh, I don't know what they're buying, but they're buying. S&P is higher by 100. The Nasdaq's up 400. About the only thing down today, crude oil. Uh, still the only thing that is down on the day. Well, you know, God, let's let's hope that uh, Italy gets through this. What a, what a mess. But, uh, again, Arizona, you know, I know our cases, well, we're over 2,000 here. Yeah, 2,200. 2,200, so it has risen precipitously. But uh, when you look at it on a, on a large scale, still the numbers do not substantiate the uh, tremendous reactions here. So uh, a $10 U.S. Liberty, legal lawful tender, and a roll of beautiful Morgan dollars, 1,900. You can bump it up to a 20 for 1,000 or 2,900. Call us 1-800-951-0592. We'll be here for you. And as long as we can. God bless everybody. Have a great day, even though it's Monday. Hard to tell the difference in days when you're not working.